So it's election night. Um, hope everybody's voting. So today is November 8th. It is election night and it's snowing in Reno, Nevada. So, one thing I wanted to talk about is um, democracy and why the Democrats, the liberals, uh, push, push democracy. It's because you got things like um, like the election was stolen and it's not st you keep telling that to the public that there's a lot of people out there that believe that Trump is still president that's under undermining democracy another thing that they're really truly talking about is um If um if they come up with laws, there's certain like I'll give you an example in Texas, you cannot have a Bible in the school because either the governor or the senator uh, came up with a law that says you cannot have you know um, the Bible. Uh, another thing like in Florida. You cannot teach, you know, that we have the woke culture, you know, it scares a lot of people. So now a lot of people, the younger generation, they want to be a, they don't want to be identified as either he or she. They want to, you know, be described as something else. There's a lot of, um, a lot of the senators, they, uh, governors have said, you cannot teach. You cannot, um, we don't want to teach that in our schools. There's only a male and a female. And there's, you know, there's no pronouns, nouns, and all that. Um, like in Kansas, they came up with a, a rule like if he was a transgender person and um, you went into the wrong bathroom and uh, if a school official didn't report it it was like a two thousand five hundred dollar bounty your school got into trouble for that there's a lot at stake and right now so like i said you have your house and you have your senate and that's how a bill gets created by the house and the senate so there's like 435 members in the house and there's a hundred senators and right now and that's how a bill is created. It starts in the House, they vote on it, it goes to the Senate, and if the Senate votes on it and it passes, it goes to the President. And that's why um, the powers that be, they said uh, in the Senate, so that's where all your senators are at. There's only like, like 100 of them. And um, I think Catherine Masto Cortez is losing by five points against Adam Lax Laxalt. They're already um, claiming victory, so she's only, she's only been in turn for one year, for a one year term. I mean, you know, it's a six year term for the senators. And if you're a governor or a senator, you can become president. And that's how Barack Obama became president because Harry Reid, who passed away, he was our, he was our senator in Nevada for the longest time. Um, I think he ran two terms, but um, he grew up in Reno in the mining town when it was very, it was a very simple, simple town. Um, there wasn't as much uh, homeless, homelessness as you see today. And a lot of that is because of the rising the cost of living. They've bumped up the wages to 20 bucks an hour. And it's not, I mean, 10 years ago, shoot, 
when I was making that, I was like, yeah, I make $21 an hour. Now that because the cost of living is so high, your m money is not, the money that you're making is barely, you know, helping you survive. You got to choose between food or rent. You got to, because if you don't have, you could go, you get, get away with the, you know, like me, I, I never could qualify for food stamps. Even though I pay child support, I never could get help. The judge would tell me, go, go apply for food stamps. But I would always get denied. Um, because they said I made too much, which is ironic. Because they go by your gross earnings, which is, you know, the people that need help, they don't get help, you know. And there's a lot of people that not you know that need help and and they and they truly do need help and they do get the help and um, yeah so when they say the democrats message like i said the democratic party is very weak um i wish i would have took school serious because i would have loved to go against these guys um the problem with the democratic party they you don't know, they don't, they're hiding, they hide because they're scared, you know, they just had that capital riot, you know, they used to be vocal, and um, there's a lot at, at stake, so, you know, they push inflation, and really the president and doesn't have anything to do with inflation, it's the Federal Reserve, they have to, they have to touch, touch that, little, it's like a little, it's like steering a wheel or a lever. You, so it affects like people's mortgages, your credit cards. The Federal Reserve raises those interest rates or lowers it to get inflation down. If they don't do it just right, guess what happens? We go into a recession and lots of people get laid off. Right now we're at a very low unemployment rate. So there's a lot at stake. Between 18 and 34, more people voted in 2020 than today. Sorry, Pat. So yeah, today's election day. So, if the con Republicans, which are called conservatives, if they take over the Senate and the House, they pre pretty much can um, control and have so much power over us and our lives. They can create any bill or law, and it just, it's like a smooth transition. And um, I think people don't realize what's at stake. Medicare, Social Security, like you're saying, why should I care, you know? Well, this affects my mom. This affects thousands of Americans. You know, there's a couple senators in Florida who want to cut Medicare and Social Security like every five years. And there's one that wants to do it every year. And that's like, when you work, all that money that they take out, I mean, not all that money, but those taxes, those taxes go into Social Security. And when you retire, you get, that's how they determine, they determine how many, how many years you've worked while you were alive and how much, how many jobs and all that money from your paychecks goes into Social Security. You know, they want to cut that. Some of them even want to get rid of it. And that's the only retirement that some people will ever get. You know, my mom, she survives off $800 in Social Security a month. That is not a lot of money, I'll be honest with you. You know, for rent, for food, for anything. But she gets, she gets like some good benefits with Medicare and all that. So, you know, with prescription drugs and, you know, they came up with that um, Inflation Rejection Act, which uh, cuts like, uh, the cap on pharmaceutical drugs, you know, they've, they've came up with uh, methods of, you know, 
they came up with that bill so that pharmaceuticals couldn't um, charge so much. But the Republicans, the conservatives, want to get rid of that. They want to destroy that bill, and they will if they have it their way. So this election is very important. It's, um, I can't. It, I don't care who you vote for, but. You know, there's a lot of countries, there's a lot of people where they don't even have a voice. You know, when they destroy democracy, and to be honest, I think we're headed for like a civil war because we're so divided. Um, but if uh, they destroy democracy as a whole, then we might as well live in a communist country like, like China or Russia, where they have no rules where you do everything that the president tells you. You go, you eat, sleep, drink, shit, when the president tells you to sit, to eat, sleep, or shit. You wanna live in that kind of country? See, when you keep telling people that the, the election was stolen, and that president, there's a lot of people that believe that President Trump is still the president, that's undermining democracy. That's spreading lies and conspiracy theories. That's destroying our system, our democratic system. That's why it's so important for you guys to go out and vote. I know you, you think it, there's a lot of youngsters out there. They think it's like prehistoric, dinosaur age. Why, why, does my, why should I vote? My vote doesn't count. You know, like Elon Musk, he wants everybody, you know, he's invited Donald Trump back and he's, he's a, He's got on Twitter and told everybody to re vote, re um, vote Republican. So I don't care who you vote for, Republican or Democrat, just vote. Because your vote does count. And remember, it's your, it's your right as an American, your voice. You can change, you know. If we put a bunch of scumbags in office, and believe me, there's a lot of scumbags in office. Um, then nothing changes, you know? I mean, I wish I would've took uh, school more serious. I would love to run against these, these, uh, I'm, I, I would love to run against these scumbags. Um, I'd show no fear, I'd be in every town, every city, trying to make a change. So another word for Democrat, anybody know, is liberal, yep, liberal. So when they say liberals, they're talking about Democrats. One of the, the things about the Democratic Party, and I think this is why they're losing, because um, they only need, the Republicans only need one, one Senate seat to take over the Senate. and. Um, it's the messaging that like Biden and Obama and everybody put out there is um, they're focusing on abortions and uh, democracy, but they weren't focusing getting the message out there on kitchen kitchen top issues that families go through, you know and like inflation, gas prices. If they would have talked about that more, it would have made a bigger difference. But like I said, inflation, we're in inflation because one, Ukraine, we're giving a lot of help to Ukraine and Republicans want to stop that. Uh, two, we're been trying to get uh, us out of a hole with the deficit down because we owe a lot, uh, a lot of money. We try to bring our debt down. It was like a trillion dollars, Biden bought it down. We're at a very low, knock on wood, employment rate. So like inflation, the Federal Reserve touches that. It's like a remote, it's like a control, like a lever. They gotta raise the interest rates just right or they can't go too high, too low, or else we'll go into a recession. And what, what that means is, if we go into recession, then you'll see a lot of people um, laid off, unemployed, getting unemployment checks. 
so that's why it's so important, you know, to vote. Um, you know, Elon Musk has the Starlink. It's like a, because you know, like your cell phones, you use they use the towers, the you know, for 5G. They just put out the 5G towers, but they use Starlink. Starlink is a is a satellite that Ukraine used, you know, so they can get internet and they can talk. But you know, Musk he cut that. He cut that. He he wants. He told the Ukrainian president, just give Russia the land. So you got to ask yourself, whose side is he on? Is he on our side? One thing we don't do is we don't make American stuff anymore. You know, we used to make American stuff, but we don't make American-made stuff. The only thing that we do make is is a Gorilla Glass for your cell phones, so they don't break. But we used to make a lot of things. We had Ford, we had Chevy, you know, we built, we built things and that's what made us great. And we're not building things anymore. We're working with China, you know, I mean, Elon Musk may make stuff here in America, but a lot of the stuff is, is uh, um, you know, from outside, China, Germany, you know, he's got gigafactories everywhere. I call them Willy Wonka factories. You know, but a lot of these things, like, our democracy is at stake. And we are headed for a civil war because we're so divided and we don't listen to each other. We don't, we don't see each other's differences. And these p senators that are running, they're just brainwashing people and telling them that the election was stolen and this and that. And, and um, it's not true. You know, and you keep believing in something that's not true, then you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to have a democratic system. Today's election day, so all the buses are free. It's still pouring in snow. It's actually kind of, kind of nice. But it's not nice if you're homeless. I'll tell you that. I'm surprised how people can even make it. Back in the days, you could be, you could be, you know, you could be, a father could support his family off one income, pay rent and food. Now you got couples that can't even make it. You know, they both work and they still can't make it. So because of the high cost of living. You know, in Arizona, the minimum wage is twelve dollars, but the cost of living is lower. Texas, the wages are kind of low, and but the cost of living is low in some places, like the hoods. But um, if the Republicans take over the the House and the Senate, the House of Representatives, with a bunch of Congress people's uh, city you know, um, elected officials, um, if they take over all, there's 435 seats in the House and there's 100 seats in the Senate. So, you know, once they take over that, they can come up with any bill and they'll just be, they'll just pass it on. Um, Nancy Pelosi's thinking about uh, retiring because, you know, the incident with her husband getting hit with a hammer, someone broke into her house, and if someone takes over the house, then if there's more uh, Republican conservatives in the house, then Nancy Pelosi, who's a liberal Democrat, will have to step down, and Kevin McCarthy will have to take over for House Speaker, and then you'll start, one of the things that they want to do, if they control the House and the Senate, they want to impeach Biden. They want to impeach the president. So, and they will try to come up with uh, different reasons. And, and even if, watch. I want you guys to watch closely after the election. If some of the Republicans lose, what is, what's the first thing they're going to say? That the election was 
rigged or they didn't count the votes right or something. Those people that work at the polls, they don't make shit. They make peanuts and they got to get harassed. Some of them even get death threats. So, there's a lot of, lot of at stake. You know, so, um, like I said, in the, in the Senate, they just need one seat to take over the... It's very close to keeping eyes on Pennsylvania with Fetterman and Oz. They're keeping close eyes with Nevada. I pretty much think Senator Castro, Catherine Castro Cortez is, is losing. But anything can happen, you know. But we need people to go out and vote. You know, the youngsters, the polls are very low. They're not out, they're not voting. The bird is trying to stay warm. I had a couple of friends that lived on the street, and they, when it was winter time, it was so cold that um, they got frostbite. On the, uh, they woke up one day, and their toes were frostbite. They ended up getting their toes chopped off. And one of the guys um, was still able, able to walk. Um, but then now they cut off his legs because the infection traveled. And now he's in a wheelchair. And I saw this one uh, a couple of years ago. Security had kicked this lady out because she was trying to stay warm. So she went across the street where the convention center is. And to... She sat in this chair, and then the next morning, Reno PD pulls up, and she froze to death. And that same, she was this, she was like in that chair, sitting in that chair, froze to death. And uh, Reno PD told the security guards to have a little bit more compassion for the when it's winter time. A lot of people don't though. They, they're trying to do their jobs, supposedly. So the paid protection, the PPP loan, the paid protection loan, paycheck protection loan, that was given during when Trump was uh, president. And basically it was for COVID, for businesses and stuff like that. But a lot of people cashed out and got, um, they got big um, cash and senators like Senator Marjorie Green. She got like $1.2 million back with the pay protection um, for us. Um, that's why when you guys got, these guys were getting like millions of dollars back, big, big businesses and stuff. And that's why when you guys got your $1,500 stimulus check, these guys were making bank. That's why they didn't give you guys another stimulus, a second stimulus check, because they already made their money. They got, they had less tax cuts. So they were able to get millions of dollars back I mean, you guys don't even know, they, while you guys got your stimulus, $1,500 small stimulus check, these guys were getting millions of dollars back from the pay, paycheck protection loan, so, and they had no way to track these people down, because a lot, some of it was fraud, some of these people didn't even have businesses, and they were cashing in, so, but they cracked down on that, so. So, talking about Elon Musk, um, talking about Elon Musk, he fired like the CEO of Twitter, asked Donald Trump to come back, and now he has the nerve, he's asking the people that he fired, not the CEO, but some of the Twitter staff to come back. 
and he's been telling everybody on Twitter to vote to vote Republican. He used to be a Democrat, but uh, you know, with power, you know, the higher you go up the ladder, they say the people that that go up the ladder, the farther you up, the farther you are up on the ladder, you're more likely to cheat on your wife, so on. So uh, there's some pretty good movies out too. I just want to say uh, they got the Black Adam, Wakanda Forever, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I grew up watching that, the cartoon, and playing the role-playing game, RPG game. Um, what else? Uh, Creed Three. That that dude looks vicious. And what else? Avatar, the second one. The first one was like a big hit. So remember you got to, <clears throat> today's November 8th, you got to like seven o'clock. And then they'll tell everybody who won in each state. It's kind of like Christmas, you know, you wake up on Wednesday morning and you find out the powers that be. It's going to be interesting and it's probably the first time in history when Republicans take over the House and Senate, which I'm hoping they don't because then we're going to be living in a messed up freaking world. And you're going to see all kinds of tax, tax benefits for, for the conservative party. They'll be getting rich. You guys are going to be struggling even worse than what you are doing now. And then you're going to wish that you voted. Because when you start cutting Medicare and Social Security, it'll be too late. And you'll wish that you voted. So vote. It's important to write as an American. Yeah. Make sure you guys vote. So like I said before, you have your House of Representatives. There's 435 members of Congress. These are seats. These are seats. These are, there's 100 senators. And this is how a bill is created. It goes, it starts in the House, they vote on it, and then it goes to the Senate, Senate and all those senators vote on it, and if it gets passed, it becomes a bill. And this is how you guys got your stimulus check. It was passed two times under uh, Donald Trump. So while you guys got your $1,500 stimulus check, um, the millionaires and big corporations during that time got millions of dollars back in tax, um, tax cuts. Um, Senator Marjorie... Uh, green, she got like $1.1 million back. All these people were cashing in. All these big businesses were cashing in. And that's why it was so hard for you guys to get the second stimulus check. Because they already, they already got, they got their money. So they weren't, I mean, yeah, we'll give it to you guys. But they had to, I mean, it was like very hard for them to like, they didn't want to give you guys the second stimulus check. And um, it's because they had already got their money. Um, so one thing I'll say, when Trump was president, he never came up with a bill at all. You know, Biden came up with the infrastructure bill, which is fixing the roads, the bridges, and all that. How many presidents said they were going to do that? Even Trump said he was going to do that. Did he do it? He didn't do it. He didn't come up with nothing. Um, they came up with so they came up with the infrastructure bill, bill which um, you know they passed. Congress passed so that they could fix the roads and highways. 
And so each senator um, gives a portion of that money to eat to their state that they represent. So Senator Catherine um, Master Cortez gave us gave Nevada money to fix our roads and highways and uh, our infrastructure. That was called the infrastructure bill. Then they came up with the the um, what you call it act, the Inflation Reduction Act, and that was. Um, you know, the bill to help people. It wasn't, it's not really going to kick into effect until a couple, to like next year. But it's supposed to put a cap on prescription drug, drugs. Um, you know, I have a friend. When I think of these elections, what I really think about is all my friends and families and, and, and their kids and my mom. Like my mom gets an $800 um Social Security check, you know, because she came to the, she's from the Philippines, but she came to America, like, late, so she didn't get a chance to work, but when she, as soon as she came here, she worked her butt off, worked two, three jobs, um, she went to school to become, and she um, did the thing to become American citizen, I mean, it was a little bit more easier if he married someone, like an American, American from over there, but now they've made it harder to become an American citizen here. They it's because of all the terrorist acts that's going on. Um, but they do need to figure out a way to. They should have like a school where people can, right at the borders, instead of building walls and stuff. They should, you know, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to take the test, like my mom did. What were the presidents? You know, it'll be in English and you know Spanish. And then you study on it, and then you have the written test, and then you have an in-person test. Like I had a friend, he was Filipino. He passed the written test because you know he's from the Philippines, but they do like this one-on-one, -on -one, and he got nervous when they were, you know, they they ask you basically the same questions that are on the test, so that you know they want to know if you really know your material, and you know that's one of the things you know a lot of people they they get the immigration thing to become American citizen and a lot of people do it, but we need it to be more accessible at the borders because there's a lot of people, you know, they come from like El Salvador. They don't even use American money there. They got MS-13, the gang controlling everything. Can you imagine being in a country where, you know, they tax, like the gangs are taxing your your uh, your store that you work at, like a little, like, you know, you're selling, I don't know, chicken or soda, whatever, and then they're taxing everybody, and these are gangs that are controlling, so they, they come here to, like, America to escape all that, you know, um, plus they had that civil war, and um, they're using crypto, Bitcoin, they're, like, one of the first countries that has, like, a a Bitcoin machine where they can change their exchange their money, but um, like I have a friend, I have a friend. He's a uh, sixty-seven years old. His name is John. I'm not gonna give his last name out, but he's he's a senior citizen and he lives in a senior citizen community. And, and he always like he gets like nine hundred in like social security, and he'll make me a care package. He was uh. A orphan so he had like foster parents but um a lot of these guys I've met on the streets and they've become better friends than some of the people that I've you know knew that were well off I'm just gonna keep it real like you know where are those guys you know but um but you know he he uh shows me like what senior citizens go through and the struggles and I always take you know that in consideration and how hard it is because I I look at my mom her struggle and how you know and him and how he makes ends meet and he he writes a whole thing down a list of like his food is you know his electric bill you know and this and that like he lives in low-income housing it's right next to uh you know, the renowned hospital. It's like, 
you know, it's a it's a place that for seniors that have medical problems and stuff. He also has a metal. He only has one lung. There's a lot of people that they don't have legs. You know, they they're on their wheelchairs. They got scooters. One time I had to push this lady who had a, like an electric scooter thing and her battery died and the sucker was heavy. It was hard to push. So I like pushed it for, you know, um, but you know, if he's witnessed like in the last month, 16 deaths just in his building alone, you know, people passing away and, um, they, the struggles of what they have to do to survive. And when, if the Republicans decide to cut Medicare and Social Security, it's going to hurt my mom. It's going to hurt my friend, John. It's going to hurt a lot of senior citizens. Like, I'm very, like, respectful and polite, and I believe in manners, and, and I believe in, like, helping people, you know, like, there was this lady, she bought this steam cleaner, and she had her, her dog, and she barely could get the thing on her bus, and, and she's walking. And I took that steam cleaner that she bought from the thrift store, and I carried it all the way to her apartment. There was no way that this lady, I mean, and it's just uh, like the morals of, of the youngsters today, they don't give a, there's like no respect. They show no respect. and. If you look into them, they're just like, they're just sort of like lifeless, you know? I mean, it's made it to where people just don't even talk. And communication is important. Like, I grew up, you know, um, in a great, in a great time, you know? I was a comic book nerd. I was sick all the time, and that's how I got into comic books. I was in... I had asthma. I was in the emergency rooms every night. I stayed in hospitals for months. So, like, I was always sick. And I just sucked in, like, pop culture. It was like, you know, that's all I could do was watch these, these crazy cartoons, these read comic books. And um, I couldn't really go outside that much. Um, but at the same time, I was aware of what was going on in the world. And, um, you know... I grew up half of the digital age and half like the analog, you know, because I went through the period of uh, records and cassettes. You know, we used to have cassettes that uh, I was there when VHS came out before VHS was Betamax. And one of the first like first movies that every everybody was like a uh, first blood Sylvester Stallone, like. Rambo. That was like the, like the one of the movies that w was one of the original movies on VHS, you know, or Betamax. Because before VHS was Betamax, and um, you know, HBO was like this big thing. You know, you had HBO in your house. It was like, you were like the greatest thing on earth. You know, because you got, like, all the movies that would come out in the movie theaters would end up on HBO. But it took like a year before, a year and a half for movies like Star Wars and Rambo and and stuff like that to, to, to make it on HBO. So it's important that you guys vote. I mean, I can't. Sorry I got sidetracked, but um, a lot of the youngsters in... More people voted in 2016, like 36% of young people from 18 to 34 voted. Now, today, only 19%. It's a big drop. It's like half. Um, a lot of people, the thing that um, the Republicans use to, like, fear tactics is um, saying that, you know, the state you live in is, that it, it's crime and... All the democratic states are, are are crime infested, and they don't they want to defund the police. But Catherine Masto Cortez, she just gave the police department in Nevada like tons of money. She endorsed them, so that's the that's a big lie. You know they're not. You know, just like Tupac. Tupac said, you know, he's like, 
just because they live in the hood doesn't mean, you know, they want police too. Just as much as, as you think they want to be next to a serial killer or a mass murderer, they're just as scared as, um, you know, of the serial killer and the murderer um, as much as, as they are. So, um, you know, another, another thing they use is, um, so, you know, look, uh, if you're blue, right, that's a Democrat, right? And when they say left, the left, they mean the Democrats. And when they say the right, We're talking about Republicans. And so, what's another word for Democrats? Do you guys remember? You're right. You got it. Yep. Good job. Liberals. What's another name for a Republican? You guys know? Come on. Don't you guys remember? Yeah, you got it. Good job. Conservative. So what color do you think the left is? Blue. Yep. Good job. What about the right? The red. Of course. You guys see those MAGA hats? They're all red. So, yeah, one of the other things that the left, I mean the right, the conservatives, the Republicans use is, and, and I hear this mostly from the younger generation, whoa, the Democrats want to take away our guns. Biden wants to take away our guns. Look. I love guns just like you guys do, okay? I used to have a whole collection of them, okay? But, come on, too many people are dying. They're just trying to um, ban, like, assault weapons that is used in war. You know, like, I don't know how many of friends I know have AK-47, I mean, not AK, uh, AR-15s. Like, from 2016, I saw... Uh, so many youngsters having like AR um, AR fifteens. One of the things that I notice at eighteen for their birthday, what they want. It's not the new Xbox, that's for sure. It's an AR fifteen, and they fit the profile. A lot of unfortunately, the white eighteen year old kid. It's AR-15. And then, you know, commits mass murder on schools, which I'm uh, totally against. Uh, so, yeah. Another thing I want to say about guns, it's in the amendment. You know, your, your, uh, the, you know, it says they can't take away your, uh, the right to bear arms can't, you know, so they can't get rid of guns for whatever you guys think. Um, they could just come up with laws to, you know, get certain people off the, you know, that shouldn't own a, a weapon. So, um, yeah, so that's about it, you know, like uh, the abortion thing, like, I believe in life just like everybody else, but I believe that we shouldn't be telling women what to do with their bodies. We don't need no 65, I mean, 80, 71 year old senator telling some lady who just got raped by her father or uncle or next door neighbor or who's not even ready, you know, to have a, a to have a child. We shouldn't be telling women what to do, like. It's a very complicated subject, and 
like I love life just like the rest, but every woman and and girl, um, their stories are all different. And sometimes they've made it to where this abortion thing is like, so like, let's say you're in labor, right? And then all of a sudden there's complications during the pregnancy and you're pro this, pro that, you know, but, um, something's going on. The baby's not going to make it. That mother still has to go on throughout the whole pregnancy. She can't abort it because of the laws that are created. See, the Senate has a, I mean, not the Senate, the Supreme Court has a bunch of judges and a lot of them are, are, are nominated. There's a whole bunch, there's like two or three Supreme Court judges that were nominated by Trump and there's more Republicans. And this situation is just ain't no different from what we're dealing with with the House and the Senate. There's a little bit of uh, Democrats and Republicans, and this is what we're voting on, guys. But right now, there's one seat. If the Republicans can fill that seat, they'll be able to take over the Senate. So now we're just, um, which means voting-wise, we're talking about votes. So if you have, because here it used to be just like two or three seats more than uh, um, Democrats, I mean Republicans over Senate. I mean, there were more Repu Republican senators, just like two two or three um, more than the Democrats. But if they fill this one seat, they'll have supreme power over the Senate. Republicans will take over. The conservatives will have control over the Senate. And here, we can only, the Democrats, because I am a liberal, I'm a Bernie Sanders kind of guy, because everything he talks about, pharm pharmaceuticals, um, you know, uh loans, student loans, uh, housing, affordable housing, uh, health care, just everything that, um, just, you know, wages, decent wages, you know, he came up with the, he's the reason why when Jeff Bezos had Amazon, he's the one that um, put the pressure on Jeff Bezos and was like, they need to get paid more. They're a billion-dollar industry, and if it wasn't for Bernie Sanders, Sanders, those employees wouldn't even be making $15 an hour. They'd be making a lot less. Um, that's why I don't order off Amazon. I mean, yeah, that's really cool, but, I mean, you get the Prime membership. You know, you pay like 100 bucks a year or whatever, but um, what they what he does to employees is just disgusting in my book. I can't, I can't, um, but yeah, it's no different. So the Supreme Court, they deal with the serious issues, issues like gay marriage and, um, abortions and, you know, we just nominated a black, a uh, black woman in the Supreme Court and it was nominated by Joe Biden. So there's still more Republicans than Democrats. Supreme Court judges and these judges are there's no time limit they're there until they die or you know or if they don't feel like they can continue so you know we had Ruth they called her the notorious uh, are you or whatever they kind of gave her like a nickname like the notorious B.I.G. you know because she was a bad mamma jamma like she was very smart and intelligent. And they got Brett Kavanaugh, who was nominated by by um, Trump. And he had some sexual assault things going on. But the Republicans backed him up. You know, they even took it to Congress. They even had like a, 
they even questioned him, all these Democrats and Republicans, but the Republicans, they wanted him to become a Supreme Court judge so bad. He had, supposedly he had uh, some sexually, he had sexually assaulted some women in college and it got out, the news got out and they were questioning him, you know, because Trump wanted him to be the Supreme, one of the Supreme Court judges. And then all these guys like Lindsey Graham and Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows, they just laughed it off and they gave him an easy break because they wanted him to be in the suit. It's all about power, guys. The more power you can get, the more money. And, uh, you know, like the NRA, the National Rifle Association, they give tons of money to the senators. So every time a thing comes up about uh, banning, you know, guns and this and that, these guys, they get a little, little, some money. The, NR, the NRA sent, gives them like a big old check, you know, if they, uh, you know, work with them. And a lot of them, these guys are Republicans and they get like Mitch McConnell and Ted Cruz and they get this little, here, Here's, here's a little check for you guys' troubles. See, there's a lot more to it that people don't see. And if you don't understand, like, I didn't care about politics. I hated the news. I didn't watch the news. I mean, and maybe it's because I'm getting older. But when I started seeing, like, I didn't vote. I'll be honest with you. I didn't vote until Obama um, was running. And then my eyes started opening up to, like, you know, real issues and stuff. So the, the three things, like I said, that people, a friend of mine says, we don't talk about because it causes fights and arguments, politics, sports, and religion. You know, I was like, I had this friend at work one day, and um, he was like, there's three things I don't talk about, politics, sports, and religion, because every time it gets brought up, you know, you know, there's been more wars started over religion alone. You know, they made the Tower of Babel. It's in the Bible. And this, they just kept building and building because there was these different races and religions and they couldn't understand what the other person was saying. They called it the Tower of Babel and they kept building and kept building. And um, I kind of agree with him on this, but then I kind of disagree because I, we hate what we don't understand a lot of times. But if we like me, I'll try to learn a new lag language like I could say thank you in Indian, you know, like I, I like to see how like the expressions on their faces when I tell them thank you in their language or whatever, you know, I'll say shukriya, shukriya, you know, or it's because I took the effort to learn and, you know, like I had American friends that went to Germany and they were telling these Germans to speak English and you're in, and you're in Germany, you know, you need to try to learn their language, their cultures, you need to respect them, because you're not an American, you're, you're an American, and it's great to be an American, but we're not bullies, we don't, you know, so yeah, religion, sports, you know, <laughs> sports, I've seen a friend of mine, he doesn't even talk to me anymore, because of, this is a long while back, it was about uh, LeBron James. He's a big LeBron James fan. And so he was sporting the Cavaliers or Miami Heat hat. You know, he was with the Cleveland Cavaliers at first. And then he went to Miami. They won a championship. And then, because um, I paid attention. And he was, I was like, yo, LeBron's going back to Cleveland. He didn't believe me. And, and he didn't like my team because I'm a diehard San Antonio Spurs. And I'll be a San Antonio Spurs, win or lose till I die because that coach is coach pop is a great coach and he creates like the people that end up that he ends up coaching even though they go to different teams 
they end up becoming some really good players. You know, they end. So, um, yeah. The important thing is I hope you guys vote. Um, this is a longer video than I wanted. My other video got banded because I used uh, a song by the Migos. So I had to make a different one. So you guys got till 7 o'clock tonight. November 8th. To vote. And tomorrow. Um, so like I said, uh, you guys know what a filibuster is again? It's a buster. I know somebody's going, filibuster? That's a buster in disguise. So you'll hear that word filibuster. That's a... Uh, so when a bill is created, the Democrats want to get rid of it because they'll come up with the bill. And the filibuster is basically like a senator or congressperson. They'll argue about it and talk about it over and over so that the bill, they'll spend days on it and just argue over it and, and just do nonsense so that it doesn't become a bill. And so they want to get rid of the filibuster. So if you hear the word filibuster, it's because they're just basically stalling so that the bill doesn't get passed. You know, um, they just have meetings after meetings talking about, you know, you know, like they probably did it with the second stimulus check. And they just, no, we don't think, you know, we don't think these guys should get another one because it's going to put us in the bubble. You know, I'm just giving you guys examples. Um, if you hear the word bipartisan, sorry, so stop. I'm trying to hold the camera and, and talk at one time and write. Um, so bipartisan is like when we say bipartisan vote, it means that they're trying to get, they're trying to talk about it. Or between the House and the Democrats and the Republicans. So they're trying to get a bipartisan vote in when they say it. Because a lot of times these guys don't even listen to each other. They hate each other. They're like gangs. You know? So. Hope you guys learned something. Talk to you guys later. Um, we'll find out the results tomorrow on Wednesday morning. Hope you learned something. Peace. So another thing I wanted to say was the another thing they came up with before I like um the microchip bill, which um so like Intel has said the company Intel Computers has said that um, we're running out of microchips and if we want to be competitive we need to create, you know, we need to be able to have a manufa manufacturer, you know, if they're not going to supply us like from other countries, if, if we need to be able to get microchips to stay competitive. So, like I said, um, you know, lots of presidents said that they were going to take the troops out of Afghanistan, like Trump and Obama and Bush, and they never did, you know, Clinton, but Biden, you know, like, is he perfect? No. There were some mistakes made, you know, but he pulled the troops out, like he said, you know, so, so there's a microchip bill. There's an infrastructure bill and there's the Inflation Reduction Act bill. And what did Trump come up with? Nothing. Nothing for the Americans. And just let you know, no bills was created when he was president. But he made a fortune off big business. And he made sure all his friends got paid. Because that's what this is all about, guys. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. In politics, they call that quid, quid.
Quid Pro, this for that, and, um, you know, so, uh, make sure you guys vote, it's important, I can't specify how important it is, um, make sure you, if you haven't voted, bring your neighbor, bring your friends with you, you know, make it an event, you know, it just takes five minutes, go in there, Computer, you can go like to uh, um, where Job Connect is that that mall that's near uh, Old Town Mall, not Old Town, Reno Town Mall by the Atlantis. There's usually always booths, and that's where I used to go. And you just you know you bring your ID. You have to have your driver's license or your 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 ID card and. Show it to them, and that's about it. And you'll feel good after you, after you, as an American, you did your duty. So, take care, guys. Peace.